Hi, my name's Kendra Gaylord. I'm the host of the podcast called Someone Lived Here. Um, and I just finished watching WandaVision and it was such a good show. And there were so many little secrets that I noticed in it um, that kind of had to do with architecture and homes. And because I have a podcast that kind of is about the stories of houses and how some of those like architectural details mean stuff, um, I thought it'd be cool to kind of go through and look at kind of some of the Easter eggs that the TV show kind of hid in. And I actually did an episode specifically about Jack Kirby's house, um, actually his tenement that he first lived in in New York, um, City in the Lower East Side. And he actually created the characters of the Scarlet Witch, Wanda, um, and also he was kind of made the prototype to Vision and the story of where he grew up and then kind of where he moved to is really cool. So if you want to check that out, I'll put a link down in the description. Um, but yeah, so it's cool to like have that as a little backstory that kind of informs the whole show that we're going to talk about today. As you might know from watching WandaVision, uh, the episodes are so very focused around specific decades. Um, and sitcoms. So these aren't as, they're more portrayals of portrayals <laughs> of what America was doing um, at that time. So a lot of the architectural choices are kind of more based off of the history that was portrayed in TV shows. A lot of this was filmed um, specifically on the lot, um, on a Warner Brothers lot. So the houses and the buildings aren't like real houses and buildings. I found a few examples where that was different, but in general, it's sets. Um, and those sets are being created solely so that they can be used in multiple purposes and have a lot of opportunity to, to be helpful. Okay, so in the first episode, we're starting out in a 1950s uh, sitcom. From the outside, it's like a one-story ranch. Cars in the 1950s became really part of people's lives and was something that middle income people could start to afford. Um, and that also meant kind of the public transportation really changed during that time. And, you know, where you used to only want to, you would have a lot of properties in a short amount of space so that you could walk to public transportation really easily. Um, instead, things were changing so that you could, you know, you'd be able to drive everywhere. So you're car is like the most important thing you have and it goes in the garage so the garage is attached and that's kind of where that ranch style garage kind of home that's really popular around this time cool about the inside of this house is it's really identical to the dick van dyke show um set like honestly looking at the two i started to mix them up so in the first episode we do get a few like external shots what i really like about this show is the styles constantly changing so every episode the house becomes a completely different shape. And that's actually something that's funny is like, we see an outline of the foundation uh, towards the end of the show. And it's like, this house has gone through like 40 different transformations, especially inside. It's like, there's rooms off of here that would be like in the middle of the street. It doesn't actually matter, but it's something that I always notice when I'm watching something. I'm like, wouldn't that house, wouldn't that like where the nursery was would just be like in the front yard. So in the second episode, we're getting a ton of bewitched vibes, even starting at the very beginning. Um, in the intro credits, you know, it's this filmed animated piece. Um, it feels very similar. Um, it's also where we get a really nice drawing of the house. At the start of this episode, we actually get to see um, their bedroom and it's starting out with two separate beds which although not common in real life because two beds means like double the expense it was very common in tv especially around 1951 there was the code of practices for television broadcasters and they called for specific decency and decorum specifically calling out quote the use of locations closely associated with sexual life or with sexual sin must be governed by good taste and delicacy. And so in the start of the episode, she actually kind of like zaps the beds together and it becomes a, a, a single bed. Um, kind of like a suggestion of the moving on of time where that becomes, you know, I Love Lucy definitely had a very separate bed style in the 50s. Um, and things are starting to get a little bit more cozy. So by this episode, they've magically gotten a second floor, 
We can see the stairs at the start of the episode when Vision's practicing his magic show. In the drawing of the house in that intro, it looks most similar to what the house on the Warner Brothers ranch actually looks like. But throughout episode two, we're seeing a version of the house with pointed dormers on the roof, and one of the second floor windows is missing. This is the exterior of the house that we'll see throughout the rest of the show, with just the color of the paint changing and some window shapes changing. Pretty much right once they get back inside, after seeing the scariest bee man I've ever seen, um, the color starts coming to everything in the room. What's funny is the decor in here is gonna change wildly between this episode and the next episode. A lot of the decor that we see at the end of this episode is kind of the last time we see it. So episode three starts and we're very much in the 70s. Um, there's a ton of call outs that I noticed in terms of decor, like that are call outs to previous sitcoms. You know, they still have the front door on the left and the closet on the right. There's now like a floating staircase. Um, which was popular at the time and is very like trendy. Um, also my favorite part, which again makes no sense to the outside of the house, but there's stained glass squares um, in a specific design. And this is of uh, the Brady Bunch, which that f they had a floating staircase and behind it was a bunch of kind of these very 70s color stained glass. Um, the exterior of the house has actually shifted, but now it's kind of a yellow, like kind of a mustardy yellow. I think it was smart for them to put that because it, it does feel very indicative of the time. Um, there's some details about the house that I would guess it would probably be called like neo-colonial. Um, usually in suburban homes, it's, they're kind of just choosing what they want. So the base, you might say it's colonial, um, but they're kind of just like taking pieces from different things. The windows don't necessarily make sense. The part that bothers me the most is the extremely highly pitched dormers, um, kind of on top of the windows with just a tiny little window inside. <sighs> To me, it's just not for me. I just think that it, they're such steep, steep dormers. I think that they're trying to kind of do a call out to her costume and kind of that more pointy look. Um, maybe trying to pull in some like witch vibes. So fourth episode, we're like in modern day and yuck, no thanks. Um, so then if we go to the fifth episode, now we're kind of in the 80s. Um, there's a lot of ties to like ties. There's a lot of ties to family ties. And I think it's it's a cool um, connection. The interior becomes a lot of dark woods. There's a lot more like detailed stained glass within the house. Um, it is kind of funny because we're watching a house change and it's kind of going back in time in this one. What's cool is when Wanda and Vision are fighting, they're actually, you can see the similarities so perfectly between the TV show Family Ties um, and and the set that they chose for the living room, even down to like the couch that they're using is like a similar, a very similar yellow. Um, what I loved about this episode was we finally get to see the outside of Agnes's house for the first time. So that's actually the house that they used in Bewitched. So we see her outside the house and that becomes a bit of a hint. The whole idea of Bewitched is there's like a secret witch and you know, she's a secret witch. So I thought that was a great little tie-in. I also feel like that might have been the reason that they chose to film on this specific um, ranch lot because that's that house is three street, three doors down from um, the house that our, our buds Wanda and Vision are in. So I loved that. That was probably my favorite like kind of Easter egg that I noticed. Another cool piece about Agnes's house is I was looking through some old tweets that people had done to see where they filmed things and just kind of see if anyone got any outside perspectives. And it was really interesting because they actually filmed parts of it in like um, outside Atlanta suburbs. And I actually found the house, even though there was no address associated because I knew the town that it was in. Um, and then I used 1920s Sanborn fire insurance maps. And I was able to tell from the photos, the video that someone took that it was a brick building. Um, and by using Sanborn fire insurance maps, you can actually learn a lot about a location based on a time. 
What's really funny is you see the bewitched house and it is a tiny little postage stamp of a house. And if you see, oh, I'm putting in the, the videos or the photos of what the actual house that they filmed it within. This is where they filmed kind of the, the shots of, of Agnes welcoming um, Wanda into her house, but then actually trapping her and tricking her. Um, if you're interested in any of that and how I do some like historic research specifically around neighborhoods and, and if you want to research your own neighborhood or your own house or apartment, the last YouTube video that I put out, um, it kind of is like a how-to. It's specifically for New York City, but honestly, it works for anyone. So if you want to watch an amazing video about the vintage clothing and just kind of the style and, and some of the inspiration, um, highly recommend Mina Lee. She did a great... Um, a great video on just the the clothing and and kind of there's some cool stuff about Mary Tyler Moore's pants and she does a great job like kind of working in history. Thanks so much for watching. I will talk to you in the next one and tell me if there's any other shows or movies that you'd like more details about the architecture and I can do some research and it can be fun. Okay, thanks everyone. Bye.